Now this computer's in for a DC jack replacement. It, it's not even here for this. But this is just mangled. This is a Dell Inspiron 15-5100. Now, I apologize in advance as I have been tweaking my video setup a bit and I may sound a little different if you're used to my videos. If you're a first time visitor to my videos though, welcome. Um, the first step that all first time visitors to my videos need to know is that you take all the screws out of the bottom of the computer first. Always. And they haven't hidden any this time. So <clears throat> we don't have any screws hidden in the feet. It looks like we're actually missing the screws that go under the battery. So I wonder if someone's already been in here. Anyway, let's dig in. Take all the screws out of the bottom. Uh, obviously remove the battery first. Take all the screws out of the bottom. A process that I have to do every time and that takes forever and that constitutes most of the disassembly work. Uh, get the CD drive out, but I took the screw out and it's not coming out. So let's take all the screws out first and see why after we've taken all the other screws out. Let's go ahead and, ooh, that screw is very different from the CD drive screw. It is, it is much longer. So that's something to note. CD drive screw is a much smaller screw and probably needs to be put back separately. You'll notice the keyboard has spring clips holding it in. So we need to get the keyboard out and there should be screws under the keyboard as well. So if you didn't catch that, here, let me give you a little zoom action. If you didn't catch what I did there, you take a pry tool um, you can use a flathead screwdriver if you're careful, but I prefer soft metal curved end pry tools. Stick it down into the spring clip. You push the clip in like this, then worm it down under the keyboard and pull back so it warps up. Then you can get a fingernail or a fingertip under it. And when you do that, popping successive clips, that one being the hardest because your hand's always in the way, becomes so much easier. There are also two clips on each side holding it in, which isn't a big deal once you get the top five ones loose. We're going to take this flip lock connector here, loose, pop, and that just comes out. One keyboard out of the way. There's another one here. It doesn't like to come up, apparently. It goes to the optical drive that wouldn't come out. Now. I don't see anything that should be stopping that optical drive from coming out. So let's try one more time to see if I can get this thing to come out. Yep, it came out. It's a little tight for some reason and I can see that it's grabby. That may just be the cheap design. These Dells are so cheap. You do have to get the drive out and I'll show you why if I can. There are screws here, here, and here all the way down the optical drive section. So you do have to get it out and take these screws out. You're gonna need that brightness again, aren't you? Yeah, I figured you might. You have to take these optical drive area screws out before you'll be able to remove the top plastic here from the bottom. They're very flat screws, very small flat things. Flip it back over. Let's look at this keyboard one more time. Okay, we have a screw here. We have one here, 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 and here, and that's it. So, let's go ahead and get those out. Mm, oh, that one doesn't feel very good. Um, let's see, what about this one? That one came out okay. This one doesn't feel right. It kind of feels like maybe the mount that goes into is broken or something. We'll figure it out later. Let's check this one. None of them are particularly tight, which I suppose is not a huge surprise. Considering that the computer originally had come in with screws missing. 
So some of them being loose, can't say it's a big shock to me. All right, so what do we do now? Now we have to pry this thing apart. And how do we pry it apart? Well, you'll notice there's a seam right here. You'll notice right along this bottom, there's a seam. And you would notice wrong. Because that bottom seam right underneath the keyboard palm rest area is not the seam you use to take this apart. There's another seam here at the front lip that goes around. You can see it actually near the ports and such. And that's the seam you need to get into to pop this loose. Now the good news is once you've popped a few of the front ones loose, it just gets easier from here. And uh, yeah, I mean, do I really have to explain that? That's pretty straightforward. Not gonna lie, pretty easy. And what is going on in here? Oh God. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's not fun. All right, so something clearly is wrong. Yeah, okay. We have a little bit of a problem here. That mount is in fact broken. I can see it right here, it's broken. Um, that's not supposed to come off. Yeah, that's, oh, oh, okay. That was, that's not supposed to be off of there. This is broken. Uh, okay. This is supposed to be fused here with these plastic things. And the CD drive plate goes here. So logically, it goes here. But, uh, yeah, everything's just kind of broken loose in this whole thing. It, what a mess. Good grief. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not happy about this because now I'm going to have to do a lot of extra work. This metal bracket is supposed to be here. The plastic welds have snapped. This metal reinforcement is also supposed to be here. Now, this computer's in for a DC jack replacement. It, it's not even here for this. But this is just mangled. So, the screw that goes through here, yeah, there's all these screws aren't actually holding anything at this point. So, I'm not, I'm not sure how this happened. But, it's epoxy time. Yeah. So, let's get some of that epoxy, boys. Take a cotton swab, chop one of the nice cottony ends off of it, and throw it away. Cotton swab. And watch me act like I know what I'm doing. Yeah, buddy. So, this metal plate broke loose. This metal plate broke loose. And we're going to just fix it all. We're going to dump the epoxy right here. Because this is where it has to go anyway. There's really no reason not to just dump it all right there and be done with it. Massive amounts of epoxy, more than is necessary. Mix it up in this area here where the plate will go. Yeah, that's good. Mix it up really well. You have to make sure that hardener gets mixed in really well with the resin. And it's super thick, too. Chunky thick. Like some kind of bad soup. Yeah, and there's there's a plastic weld that doesn't want to come out. We're going to go ahead and, and break it out of there. Or so, I think. Yeah. Alright, so this goes here. And there's three plastic welds here. That now have to be reinforced with epoxy instead. Yeah. Go ahead and get this one. I've actually never had to fix one of these brackets before though, so I wonder how on earth they managed to pop all this loose. Anyway, uh, don't have much more time to wonder that because uh, that's not good. If you get epoxy in places that it's not supposed to be, you can end up with a problem too. So just be real careful about that. Now we need some epoxy on top because these plastic welds went through 
So we kind of need the metal. Whatever. Yummy. Yeah. And I just realized I put it down upside down. Oh, what's wrong with me today? You know what? Don't answer that. If you if you're typing a comment telling me what's wrong with me today, keep it to yourself. I, I can think of at least a hundred million things. Uh, I exist. I am insufficiently caffeinated. Uh, I exist. Huh. The list is starting to sound a little cyclical. Anyway, or maybe the correct word is cynical. So, that's a thing that broke and hopefully will go back down and be fixed for me. Um, toss the Q-tip. Oh, I'm sorry, Cotton Swab. We're not supposed to use the brand name like that. I uh, always thought that was dumb. The fact that you're not supposed to use brand names when they become too popular because it dilutes their trademark. You're not supposed to say Google it. You're supposed to say Google, use Google to search for it. Uh, whatever. Keep your Q-tip Cotton Swabs for all I care. I'm back, and this is not... Fun. Uh, it turns out that the mount that's broken over here actually holds the hinge. It holds the most extreme end of the hinge. So, oh, something else broke. Great. Oh, uh, oh, you got to be kidding me. Well, it looks like today's basically just going to be a giant epoxy day. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can't even see what I'm doing because at this point I'm. Oh my God! They just. This thing's falling apart. Another mount fell out. Uh. Alright, so basically, um, you know, inform the customer that their computer has dissolved. Uh, that anchor. Oh, uh, there's, there's no way. There's no way that I get out of epoxying this now. Oh no, this whole hinge mount is destroyed. Oh, that's, that's just terrible. Ah, uh, well, I wouldn't have known if I hadn't needed to come in here and poke at the DC jack. So, yeah, um, you take this hinge loose. Oh, that, that hinge is in bad, bad shape even in the lid. Uh, this is, this is rapidly becoming a major problem. All right, take the screw out of the power jack. Take the screw out of the power jack, unplug it from the motherboard, if it will allow it. Oh, come on, it's really stuck. So the new jack is like twice the length, but all that matters is that it physically fits and the physical connections work. Uh, it actually looks like it is the same connection type, so that's good. The bad news is I don't know... Oh, there was tape holding it. Of course there was tape holding it, because why wouldn't there be tape holding it? Because that's the way they treat me. Alright, so this jack is actually a big problem because we have to get the motherboard out too. This job has just become an absolute disaster. I don't know... These aren't even... Okay, that explains one of the battery screws being missing. One of these posts that fell out was for one of them, I believe. Oh, man. This thing is just in terrible shape. All kinds of stuff has disintegrated in here. Uh, I mean, I found... Oh. Oh, my God. This computer's really... Look, that dissolving joke I made earlier is probably not far off from the truth at this point. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is, oh. There's basically no, oh no. All right, so we have gone from a hinge, or from a DC jack repair to a need to completely repair the hinge mounts. Oh. Complete with screws that won't come out where the other end is under a piece of metal.
Okay. Well, this is truly an unfortunate situation. I can't get in there to epoxy it back down, but at the same time, the mount inside is broken and is free spinning. So I also, all right, I'm gonna jam the pliers in very hard. Squeeze, absurdly hard. Trying to squeeze the brass mount ring that's stuck in there. Probably damaging the plastics more in the process. But look, that, oh, come on. It's coming out. I really just need the screw to come out. Once the screw's out, I can worry about bending metal and stuff later. And there's one screw. Now what about the other one? How bad is the situation with this other one? Yeah, well that one screw coming out gave me a little more leeway with the other one. But, what the hell am I supposed to do? Like I can't even see that one. I don't think I can reach it, and I can't see it. Uh, uh, yeah, there it is now. I had to bend the metal to get it up. But there it is. For better or worse. Almost certainly for worse. Oh. Also just realized how dark the video is. You know what? I'm going through a minor catastrophe here. So I think you can tolerate some slightly darker than usual video. So that I can get my stuff straight here. Uh. There we go. That's a little brighter. I need some coffee. This is a very important tool in the computer repair technician's toolkit. All right. Oh god, that's that is just awful. So now the metal's all mangled. This customer's also one of those customers that doesn't like to leave their stuff very long, so he's expecting to be able to pick it up in a few minutes. I am not kidding. That ain't going to happen. This is why I usually want customers to leave things with me. It's epoxy disaster time with Jody, the epoxy disaster guy. Oh, I'm so tired of this. I hate this stuff. It smells so funny and... God, I've actually gotten sick off of it before. But, you know, it's a necessary evil in the field. I actually wish that there was some of this stuff that's a little bit less chunky because this stuff I find to be a little too thick to work with. Uh, it'd be nice if it was just a little bit more runny. Not a lot, but a little bit. A little bit more runny would be nice, frankly. Quite nice. All right. Gonna have to lay down some epoxy and get those anchors to sit. And, uh, you know, if you've watched my videos on this stuff, you know that once I start laying down these brass anchors directly, they're pretty much just going to be permanent installations. Um, it would have actually been very smart of me to, you know, maybe perhaps not have jumped the gun on that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's, this is, this is just a, a, an unmitigated disaster, frankly. Um, this metal being in the way is totally unhelpful. Yeah, the screw will have to go through that. And I I can't stand this, man. This is this is just the worst. And the problem is like once it's broken, there is no other real solution to this problem than just gluing the tar out of it and hoping for the best. There's nothing you can do. You you can't you can't find any better way. <laughs> it's this is it. This is the pinnacle of your capability. Shove a bunch of stuff, you know, shove some glue in, poke some things back into place, uh, clamp it all back up and hope that it lines up and holds itself together. Because you know you're not going to hold it together. And I see that one cracking actually. This one over here, catch it before it becomes a problem. But I see this one already falling apart. 
probably due to the other ones. It's sort of a cascade because the force that is no longer applied to the busted ones, guess where it gets applied? So as you know, I run a business and uh, I keep getting interrupted by that business because customers are trying to reach me. But I've got this epoxy over here that's hardening. So I'm, I'm actually up against several different things that are all vying for my attention. And the DC jack is not cooperating. You know, just to add to the frustration, the DC jack is, um, it is structured slightly differently. It needs to go under a hinge though. So that's kind of a problem for me. Uh, no, it's about right. It just doesn't want to go. So I'm, I'm having quite a day. Please send help. <laughs> oh man, this is, um, this computer will be the death of me, I swear. Oh uh, yeah. So, friends, um, I know this video is supposed to be about repairing a DC jack, but we've already gone well into hinge mount repair territory and are now up against uh, epoxy hardening. Actually, my epoxy's, yeah, it's pretty bad. So, I am, I am probably not going to be able to finish this video um, where you can see the end of it. So I think you've got the gist of it and I'm just gonna have to let you, I'm gonna have to rely on the removal or the re reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. I can't even talk straight because this has become a sewer of extra work and as I said before the customer is pressuring us to get it done quickly so I'm gonna have to go um, if if you wouldn't mind like share subscribe blah blah look in the bottom go to jodybruchon.com for links where you can financially support my effort here where I'm making all these videos for people to try and help them do this awful awful work on their own instead of paying somebody else or so that somebody else can pay them for the convenience of not having to deal with hinge mount repairs. The worst thing ever. Period. Uh, God almighty, what a mess. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Um, hopefully, if you are repairing your Dell Inspiron 15-5100, you're not going through what I am. Take care.